Welcome to my channel. I'm Elle. I use she, her pronouns, and I am a sustainable fashion activist that creates weekly educational videos around ethical fashion. In today's video, I will be explaining what sustainable fashion is, how it relates to the global fashion industry, and a few easy ways you can get started in your sustainable fashion journey. First, I want to explain that sustainable fashion is hard to conceptualize because there is no set definition. This has led many Many people and organizations to define sustainable fashion differently and to use the term differently to address the varying issues and solutions within the fashion industry. And to add another layer to this onion, sustainable fashion can also mean slow fashion, ethical fashion, eco fashion, <laughs> circular fashion, fair fashion, secondhand fashion, or even vintage fashion. All these terms and their slightly and dare I say ambiguous varied definitions also makes the single fashion all the more difficult to understand. However, it does leave a lot of room for ideas and solutions to be created in the face of all the issues in the fashion industry. But to simplify what sustainable fashion means right now, the following definition is what resonated the most with my values and views. Yet yeah, my advice is you take what resonates and to stay aware that my definition will be both different and or similar to others interpretation of it. So the definition, sustainable fashion is a holistic practice of looking at fashion planetary and human impact and its interconnection to social and economic issues in order to maintain a natural and balanced relationship with current resources through our personal clothing needs and choices while striving to adapt the following eco-friendly practices in the fashion industry re-envisioning fashion design and clothing production and consumption producing and consuming clothes that respects the planet prioritizing recycling and reusing practices upholding policies that ensure the safety and human dignity of garment workers this definition was heavily influenced by remakes take on it and if you're not familiar with remake they are a super cool sustainable fashion nonprofit that aims in making fashion a force for good now that we know the definition of sustainable fashion how does that even relate to the global fashion industry how is this relevant well the fashion industry is actually riddled with issues. To simplify and to explain all of this, I've categorized it into major themes. Poverty wages, unsafe workplaces, no job security and bad contracts, work and right violations, gender discrimination, exploitation of migrants, unclear supply chain, weak and voluntary brand effort, and no legal liability and waste pollution. However, as I go through these major themes slash issues, please note my explanations are only skimming the surface. Poverty wages. Okay, did you know that most garment workers work long hours for very little pay? There are tens of millions of people across the world that do not even make a living wage from the clothing they make. This forces them to survive on the very little they earn. It makes it hard for them to afford even three proper meals a day and to send their children to school and it forces them into generational cycles of poverty, unsafe workplaces. Sweatshops are not just a thing in the past. Factories where fashion is made are almost always made in sweatshops. This is because most fashion brands are in a race to cut costs and want to sell their goods at the highest profit margin possible. So it causes factories to make unethical decisions to survive. And fashion brands perfectly know this and they have full control over their production businesses. So just know it's normal for sweatshops to have sewing machines crammed together with workers struggling to have their own personal space as they breathe in hazardous chemicals coming from the clothing and where there's badly ventilated rooms where they're smelling all the fibers constantly every single day and they're actually blocked in these sweatshops. People don't want them to leave. They don't have breaks. They don't have any rights. And workers often suffer from the noise of hundreds of sewing machines that they're in and around for more than eight hours a day. And they often have carpal tunnel syndrome from doing the same thing over and over again. So there's a lot of problems that these workers suffer because they're in this position of working in a sweatshop. No job security and bad contracts. Garment workers are often employed through subcontracting. This means they are not given a regular job contract 
by the employers and are actually subject to short-term contracts. Forced overtime is also normal and workers are often not paid for the extra work they do. Workers can actually be fired for whatever reason. They don't really have any work-related benefits. So the working conditions are really bad and the pay is really, really bad. And for home workers, which are garment workers based at home, they are even more subject to exploitation because there is less regulation and rights for them. Worker rights violations. Garment workers that attempt to unionize or attempt to demand their rights in any way are often harassed, they are violently threatened or even fired. They can even end up thrown in prison too. A example is how Dahl, the leader of the trade union of Myanmar, was detained in solitary confinement in a prison for asking for her rights. She was denied visitors and access to her lawyers and she was actually not able to get her diabetic medications when she was there. It was believed that she was in critical condition at one point. So there are serious repercussions if you speak out and become a human rights activist or just want unions in general. And the reality for government workers is that fashion brands deny responsibility and don't take accountability. They often outsource their production to these countries and they claim ignorance of sweatshops and how these workers are suffering and how there isn't any rights for them. They actually end up blaming the clothing factories for the subcontracting and they actually end up reaping all the rewards which is very interesting. Gender discrimination. About 80% of the 40 to 60 million garment workers are females because of gender discrimination. Garment workers are often expected to be females and then are actually treated bad because of that and they're often more subject to bad working conditions, to low wage, to overtime, and to unsafe conditions. Females are not expected to be managers for garment factories and are actually treated less than based on their gender. And so that danger of abuse is very present, whether it's mental, physical, or sexual, at the hands of their male co-workers. The exploitation of migrants. Garment workers are largely migrants and are found across the globe. Even migrants in LA until recently were subject to exploitation and sweatshops because of all the unforced laws that allowed them to be paid through the peace rate system. Fortunately, this ended with the passing of the Government Worker Protection Act, aka the SB62 Act, which is super cool to see. Unclear supply chains. The garment industry is a national affair that is literally and metaphorically made across different parts of the world. Just one pair of jeans has been estimated made it to be touched by a hundred hands before it was bought off the rack. This means there's a lot of moving pieces and people that made it possible for one shirt to make it in your closet. Tracking everything where everything happened and how everything happened is still a super big puzzle because there is no clear tracking system present through the global fashion supply chain. This calls for creative and technological solutions so we can start tracking where our clothing is coming from. Weak and voluntary brand efforts and no legal liability. Most fashion brands are unwilling to take up binding and obligation obligatory policies that ensure garment workers accountability. The fashion industry is in dear need of factory inspections and audits that are unannounced and free of factory involvement. This would help capture the true and full story of factory operations. Brands also need to stop taking up voluntary initiatives and instead take up strong and binding laws to ensure the end of the issues found in the fashion industry. Waste and pollution. The garment industry is one of the largest carbon polluters of the earth and it's actually a large producer of waste. Toxic chemicals from the dyeing of clothing usually contaminate natural waterways and affects local communities' health and ecosystem. All the while, the enormous use of water for cotton production is being used up in agriculture crops. So moving forward, I know you want to practice sustainable fashion after learning all of this, so I would recommend you use what you already own to only buy secondhand, to rent your clothes, to mend your clothes, to watch more videos about sustainable fashion, to not throw away your clothes and instead host a clothing swap. You can always wash your clothes less, you can buy less clothes, 
and you can also be more proactive you can always make content yourself you can always talk about this issue with family or friends you can post something on instagram and you can follow my youtube channel follow other sustainable fashion influencers there's so many options and if you already see an old garment you can envision it to become something else you can make it into a blanket make it into a kitchen towel you know so there's always so many options and i encourage you to think more deeply about this issue and i hope this video gave you a general overview of what you can do and feel free to subscribe and hopefully you find all the resources you need in the description bye